so I think I'm getting a hang of this. So let's talk about what the difference is between mockist style testing and classicist style testing. Or expressed as isms, mockism versus classicism. There's a great blog post on the blog The Agile Warrior, and I'll link that in the description. But I just want to give you a few quick points. The main difference between classicism and mockism is whether you are dealing with real objects or whether you are dealing with mocks. Kind of intuitive given the name, right? So when you're testing a unit and you're doing classicist testing, then you allow that unit to collaborate with all of its dependencies. But if you're testing that unit in a mockist way, then you mock all of the immediate dependencies. And because you mock all of the immediate dependencies, you don't have to mock deeper dependencies, assuming that your system under test doesn't violate the law of the meter. Because in the latter case, you may have to mock deeper members as well. But if you're not breaking the law of the meter, then you should only have to mock the closest members of the thing you are testing. Or let's say the closest collaborators of the thing you are testing. So let's get very concrete. Think about it. Say that you have a duck class, and the duck class has a greet method, as in a greeting. So the greet method takes another object, and that object may also be a duck, but the assumption that we make, let's say that we're in a dynamic language so we don't have types, but and the assumption that we make is that whatever is passed to the greet method of the duck responds to name and responds to origin, say. So origin as in like, where does the thing or where does the duck come from? And so what does the greet method do? Well, the greet method does this. If you have a duck and you give the duck another duck, and let's say that this duck is from Canada and the name is John, then the, the first duck who's passed the John duck simply says, hey, John from Canada. If the duck is passed another object, say Jane from Sweden, then the duck says, hello, Jane from Sweden, right? That's it, nothing strange. The point is that we have a collaborator. Right? The point is that the greet method is not a leaf in the, in the object graph of the application. The method has a dependency. It takes a complex object. It does not take a primitive. It does not only collaborate with primitives. So this means that if you are doing classicist testing, then you would write a number of test cases where you pass a real instantiated duck, another concrete duck, to the greet method. So you're allowing the, the method to interact with real dependencies. But on the other end of the spectrum, if you would do mockist testing, you would say, but why is it important what the collaborator of a duck is? What actually happens is that the method makes an assumption about the interface of the thing it is passed. It's passed, it's like duck typing, right? So the duck is passed something that quacks like a duck. It's passed something that responds to name and responds to origin. So if you're doing mockist testing, then you would simply pass a mock that responds to those particular methods. So I think the, the aforementioned blog post captures this quite nicely when he says that the classicist approach tests states, whereas the mockist approach tests behavior. Because since we're mocking members, remember that we're mocking a duck, then it only actually knows how to do naming and how to do origining, right? How, how to respond to name and how to respond to origin. It doesn't know any of, the, uh, any of the other things that a duck potentially might also know. So we're coupling our test to that interface in some sense. So in mockist style testing, we are testing whether the duck delegates to this mock correctly. In other words, delegates to its collaborator correctly. And there's a strict interface, there's a, there's a strict definition of how it needs to interact with its collaborators. And this is why I say coupling, right? Because there, so, so there are pros and cons of this. Before we go further, let's also consider what, what happens in the, in the classicist case. Again, then we are focusing on states, not on behavior. So the thing in the classicist case is that we are not testing delegation. We are simply testing the output we get back given a certain set of inputs. Assuming that the method in question is not mutating, right? Because then we would have to inspect the state of something else. But if it's a non-mutating method, if, if it's a query method, if essentially this uh, greet method returns a string, for example, rather than prints it to screen. So in the classicist case, we would be testing whether the string we get back is correct only, 
right? So we're coupling, back to the coupling discussion, we're coupling in some sense less than in the mockist style. Because in the mockist style, we are potentially, if we want to, both checking the output, but also checking, definitely also checking the delegation, right? Because we have a mock and we make expectations on whether the thing we are testing is interacting with our mock appropriately. So I think if, if you understand that, that sort of captures the essence of the difference between mockist style and classicist style. And so there are a number of advantages and disadvantages with both approaches. So again, as, as we talked about, coupling is higher in the mockist style. But on the contrary, as uh, J.B. Rainsberger talks about in his great talk, Integrated Tests are a Scam, I'll link that as well in the description, mockist style testing brings you closer towards checking rather than testing. In other words, closer to verification, to general verification rather than case by case testing. So in some sense, that would give you a greater security in terms of how confident you can be that that your system actually works and not that just that you've identified a few cases that actually work. So in that video further, he makes the argument that classicist testing is unreasonable because if you have to integrate with the dependencies, then essentially it becomes a combinatorial problem. You have dependencies that have dependencies that have dependencies, etc., 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 and and if you do the calculations, you'll see that there are just an insane amount of tests to write if you actually theoretically want to cover all of the cases. Now, of course, all cases are not always relevant, so you may apply some heuristics and only test some of the cases. But still, I think that's a profound point in how easy it is to think that we are testing more cases than we actually are. But I digress, so let's cut this off here. Let's take the extremes. Mockist style, mock everything. Classicist style, mock nothing. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.